Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the Electric Viking, fantastic to see you. Now, thank you for subscribing to the channel. You know, I realized the other day that I get so much garbage in my YouTube feed and I couldn't figure out why and it's because I needed to press the bell notification when I subscribe. Next to the subscription button, there's like a little bell and if you press that and you click all, you actually get all the videos from the channels you want to see. I don't know why it's getting trash in my feed. So make sure you do that when you subscribe to the channel, just press that little bell. And thank you for, well, supporting the movement. The movement, what is the movement? Movement is clean energy, renewable energy, clean cars, electric cars, better cars, a better future, better batteries, energy storage, all that stuff. That's what it's about. That's what I'm here for. That's what I want to promote to everyone. So if you can support the channel, whether that's on Patreon or just through subscribing and watching the videos, either way, thank you. Now. Ford are doing some strange things lately. They're saying some good things, doing some strange things. They're a little bit scatterbrained. But, but, they said something that I quite liked. They said that there is iPhone-like popularity replicated with electric vehicles. You would think if they're saying that, then they're all in. And you would think if they decided to invest another $11 billion into a bunch of battery plants and EV manufacturing plants and purchase a plot of land, the biggest plot of land in the United States for car manufacturing. It's enormous, astronomically large. I have no idea why they need the acres, hundreds and thousands of, I don't remember what it was, but it was four square miles or something. Massive, massive plant. Now, Ford has been caught short though by unprecedented popularity in electric vehicles. As it looks to introduce five electrified models in Australia by 2024, starting with the Ford e Transit delivery van in mid 2022. Now, the Mustang Mach E, that's the car we want here. That's the car I think a lot of people want. It's quite a good car. Is it as good as a Tesla Model Y? Maybe not, but it's good in other ways and it's a great option to have. Now, Ford's global general manager of battery electric vehicles says the American car maker continues to underestimate the interest and increasing demand for EVs. He says, yep, Ford's underestimating it. The reaction has been twice or more what we could have expected, Palmer says, referring to the massive demand for the Mustang Mach-E. That means the car is currently not available for Australia and many other markets. In fact, it's barely even available in the United States. We're struggling to keep up with demand, he said. Well, Ford is investing US $30 billion in EVs by 2025, plus the additional $11 billion they recently announced, and is anticipating increased interest in vehicles powered by electricity. They said we're expecting EVs to be over 40% of the global product mix in sales by 2030, and we're constantly updating that mix, says Palmer. Well, you better damn well update that mix soon, because 40% is ridiculous. It needs to be 100%. Otherwise, you are in serious financial trouble if you even get to 2030. Now, don't get me wrong. Ford have a lot of demand for their vehicles. Everyone wants an electric pickup truck from Ford. Well, okay. Rivian has 50,000 pre-orders. Ford has more than 200,000. Cybertruck has about 1.3 million. But I think there's a lot of buyers that want the F-150 electric pickup truck. A lot. Ford isn't planning to make that many though. That's the challenge. Hopefully they can ramp those up quickly enough to meet demand. He said, every week that goes past, we see customers that are taking these electric vehicles. Each one they get, they tell 10 family members and friends. If I talk to a customer who has taken one of those electric vehicles, I never met one of them who will ever go back. The only product I ever saw that was 100% people are not going to go back is iPhones and smartphones. And I've been talking about this for a long time. Who in their right mind wants to go back to an old, crappy Nokia 31, whatever they were called, who cares, Blackberry, whatever those junky things were called. You don't, you just don't go back, do you? It's the same with EVs. Palmer said Ford's strategy has been to apply EV thinking to some of its most iconic nameplates and models, including the Mustang and the F-150. So what's going on right now? Well, I made a video about Ford. Their dealers are preventing them from competing with Tesla for a variety of reasons. If you don't know what those reasons are, they are real 
I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that. It's a whole video's worth of content, so I can't put it in here, but you should watch it if you haven't already seen it. Now, Ford also said that 70% of their Mustang Mac E buyers are coming from other brands. In addition to that, all right, the Electric reported that Volkswagen boasted 144,000 ID3 orders in Europe, and half of those buyers are new to Volkswagen. So Volkswagen saying 50% of buyers are new to us, to the brand. We're poaching 50% of our buyers from other brands. Pretty good chance those people have bought another car before, right? Even if you said 45%. In other words, they're poaching about half the people who buy their car from other brands. Ford's saying they're poaching 70% of people who buy their car from other brands. But is this true? Well, no, it's nonsense. I'll tell you why. Okay, Q3 2021, Ford Mustang Mach-E sales were 5,580 in the United States. Now, Ford, the brand, reported 149 vehicle sales in September, down 17.5% year over year, and 1.33 million year to date, down 7%. The rate of decline is lower, which suggests that maybe the semiconductor supply situation is improving. Personally, I see Ford's precipitous sales drop over the last two years as being a significant issue for their profitability. They've said they need to be profitable in order to purchase their new factories. They're going to do that with the profits from their current car sales. Yeah, there's not a lot of profits there to be used to make those factory purchases. So I'm not sure how those EV plans are going to pan out over the next five years. That is an issue. But sales of their electrified vehicles, BEVs, FEVs, and HEVs, increased 92% to 9,150, a new record. Now, Ford said, right, they have 150,000 reservations, now about 200,000, I believe, for the F-150 Lightning pickup truck, and 75% of them are from buyers coming from other brands. Well, Interesting, right? Interesting. So far this year, Ford has produced and sold 51,000 units of the Mach-E. That'll be more by the time you see this video. And Ford says they're poaching 70% of their buyers from other brands. But they've only sold 50,000. How many electric cars have been sold this year? BYD sold, well, it sold 71,000 electric electrified vehicles in September. Of those, 40,000 were fully electric. So BYD has sold almost as many electric vehicles in one month as Ford sold in an entire year. Well, not an entire year, nine months. Let's be, let's be reasonable here. What about Tesla? How many electric cars did they sell this year? Where did they poach all of those clients from? Now, if Tesla has sold over 600,000 electric cars this year already, do you think that some of those came from Ford? If Ford sold 50,000 and they're saying that 70% of those are coming from other brands, how many brands are poaching current Ford customers seeing their precipitous sales decline this year and last year? I would say more brands are poaching customers from Ford than Ford is poaching from them. If electric car buyers, which they clearly are, coming from other brands, as Volkswagen and Ford both confirm, they're coming from other brands, a high percentage. Therefore, pretty good chance Ford is currently being disrupted more than they're disrupting others. So foot in mouth, I think, here from Ford. So clearly there's a lot of demand for the Mustang Mach-E, but clearly the sales are very, 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 very small considering the demand that is there. So they are clearly production constrained and likely that is due to ongoing supply chain shortages that are impacting the entire industry and many other industries too. But interestingly, it doesn't seem to really be affecting Tesla all that much or BYD at all or Xpeng or... Neo or a range of other electric car manufacturers. But it's affecting Ford. Now, 
I think the key reason they're not selling more of this car is because they don't have the battery supply. They don't have the production facilities to make more of them. I think they're probably making as many as their facilities allow them to make. So it is in some ways a little bit of a compliance car. That said, they are selling a lot more of them while Hyundai are selling EVs. So that is a good thing. Now, clearly Ford didn't think, as they just said, as I mentioned earlier in this video, that this car would be that successful. So they simply didn't plan on having the capacity. Now I wonder, when Ford heard, and I'm sure they all saw that Tesla had 350,000 pre-orders for the Tesla Model Y back in 2017, did they not know then four years ago that there was a lot of demand for electric cars? Really? They really didn't know in 2017? 350,000 pre-orders for a sedan? Nobody is even into sedans. And they had 350,000 pre-orders for a sedan and they didn't know then. And they still don't seem to be that certain now. Now, Ford only planned on building 50,000 of these in the first year. If you plan to fail, or if you plan to not sell many of a car that people want, then it's a little bit like failing, isn't it? Hopefully, Ford get their shiz together and start planning to succeed because I really want them to succeed. I want General Motors, Ford, Tesla to succeed. We need American car manufacturing to stay there. We don't want all manufacturing to go to China. It's already more than one third. One third of cars in the world are manufactured in China, but actually, actually, thousands, millions of parts in those cars in those one third that are not manufactured in China come from China. So probably really 50% of the automotive market is already Chinese. We don't want all of it to go there. We need to keep some in Europe. We need to keep some in America. The world needs some measure and level of balance. Ford, if you're watching this video, come on, you know there's demand. Start making the cars that people want. Start building them or somebody else will. Thanks for watching the video. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.